one of my favorite players and currently the national coach who we will all put under pressure come Paris. Not an easy job, but they have been there, done that. Olympic gold when his past team was with him. Tokyo medal, 20 years at the top of his sport and doing wonderfully well. An absolute inspiration for each one of us. Coach, I'll start with you. I've spoken to a, a lot of your boys and the one thing they tell me is your attention to detail. Paris will be pressure. How are you looking at it? Um, we've still got a bit of time. Fortunately, we, we're gearing up now for the Pro League. The Pro League gives us eight games uh, with a slightly reduced squad from what we've had since January. Uh, it's exciting time, to be honest. I mean, the detail will always be there. We have a pool that we're preparing for, but we've obviously more focused on us right now. You can worry about a lot of other things, but right now it's all about us and getting us improved and us in the right shape, physically, mentally, technically, tactically. So. Before I go to Sri, I was told you will, uh, Paddy and Mike Horn will join the team in Switzerland and Holland and then you go to Paris. Thoughts on that leading up? Yeah, I, I think um, we would have done a, a good block of, of uh, squad training in that. The team would then be selected and then we go for a team build. Mm. Yeah, so it's a bit of a surprise. So we're looking, we're looking forward to that with Paddy and Mike Horn um, in Switzerland. And that'll be before we do our last block of training in Holland, uh, before we enter the, the Paris and into the village. Okay. Shri? You know, Olympic Games is, is very different, right? I mean, ultimately, it's Pro League is one thing, Asian Games. This is one when the entire country will be focused on it. Elections are over. So the only interest point will be Olympic Games. Your thoughts, you've been there, done that. Tokyo was such a high. Thoughts on Paris? See, uh, you can't compare Tokyo and Paris because uh, Tokyo was it's all about us, the players and the officials. That's it. There were no stands, there were no cheer supporters. And oh, definitely one thing you should point out that is that was a COVID time. Correct. Every one of, uh, I mean, the people are watching each each one game. I mean, not only hockey, uh, athletics, everything. So, but now uh, it's a silent moment and the Olympics is going to be an explosion for everyone. They just want, want, want us to win. So those people who haven't seen us from such a long period, they just, I would want to say, they just come up and they, they will teach us, they will ask us, they will, they will, you know, the certain trainers and they want us to win medals. But as you mentioned, Pro League, Asian Games, Commonwealth, but Olympics is something totally different. It comes with a lot of pressure because 365 days we are playing same hockey, but the labels comes with pressure. Yes. I, I mentioned in a lot of places like Olympics is like a pressure booker. From every place, everywhere you get pressure. So our preparation to us that is like how you can be yourself at that pressure moment. Just ignore it, just play your best. And the team is confident, the team is doing really good from past one and a half years. You can you can see that over the performance. Uh, so I, I think uh, the team is in a good shape. And as was mentioned now, uh, we are in the last stage of preparation before the Olympic Games. Coach, pressure. That's, that's, the, that's the move point. And I had asked you this uh, question multiple times when we've spoken. How do you deal with pressure? Because clearly, comparisons will be made. Your past record will be brought in. Why can't you do that with India? You have to do it for a country which is starved of champions. How do you deal with pressure? I like to reframe that from pressure to focus. I think that's what we need more uh, is just the ability in order to get consistency, we need to have focus um, on, on the job at hand and what we're trying to achieve. Um, pressure comes from expectation. So everyone else's expectation is on you. But what is our expectation of ourselves? I think that's really important to us and that then relates back to focus. What are we focusing on and what phase are we in? What are we actually wanting to achieve in this space? And then that'll take care of itself. But if we worry about everything else outside of that and the expectation is way too big because the media would like to pump us up and say we're going to win X, Y and Z. And then suddenly we're focusing on that, but we're not doing what we need to be doing. And then suddenly there's a mismatch and then we underperform. So that's that's really important for us to keep humble, really keep working hard. We haven't won anything, we haven't done anything yet. So we've still got uh, our feet firmly on the ground and we need to keep them there. The other point before I go to Sri again, everyone tells me your speciality is attention to detail. That even if you win, there's a meeting. Even if you lose, you know, multiple scenarios are discussed. You yourself told me ahead of the Asian Champions Trophy, I remember that, you know, we spoke about 
losing 2 0 or down 2 0, and then it's a situation like that, how you come up. So, you clearly there is there is a different focus and attention to detail. What's on that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you you want to go all the way through to the gold medal game, you've got to play eight games, and you may not win all eight games, and you may not play well in all eight games, but how do you find a way to win? How do you adapt from one situation where you're playing really, really well and you're scoring to the next moment where you are 2 0 down? And how do you find a way to get back in the game? How do you find a way to get a result? Because it's basically a wins and draws environment. You know, there's not much space for, for losses because wins and draws keeps you in the hunt. First, you've got to make the quarters. That's top four in the pool. And then if you're fortunate to do that, you play up against anyone. Imagine there's a mismatch in the, in the pool and an underdog beats yes. a, another seed and now it messes up the seeding and now you've got to get ready. To, you've got to get ready to play everyone at any time past the pools. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of attention to detail. Uh, we're, still, we're still improving there. But, um, yeah, it's phase by phase, group phase by phase, and uh, yeah, one moment at a time. I like the rootedness in both of them. I'm enjoying this interview because of the rootedness. I mean, there's no extra talk. There's clearly a, a clear focus on process. Sri, after Tokyo, the expectations have risen. You know, there is so much talk now because of Tokyo. The reference point has become Tokyo. How do you look at that? The stardom, the, the support for hockey, the visibility, the talk. See, uh, after, after a great win, uh, you know, uh, we become overnight stars. But we individual players know how hard it was to reach there, how we struggled, what all, what all we faced through that long journey. Because, um, you know, that what happened in 2008, what happened in 2012, then into 16 and now Tokyo so it's a it's a journey it's not overnight process uh, so um, after the 2021 episode hockey got a hype in uh, India everyone started to focus more into hockey more, more sponsors are coming up more people are the kids are interested into hockey and uh, the more more talented players included into the world group so this sort of changes all what happened uh, into Indian hockey then second things when you are I mean, you're focusing to the Paris that's an that's an experience which we got it from uh, last Olympic Games. Uh, in this board, almost 12 to 13 members are there from the last yes. year Olympic Games. And that experience matters a lot. The youngsters, now, now we are in 28 board groups. So the other 15 are getting uh, you know feedback from these seniors. They are saying how it was, the pressure, how they managed. Then after that Australian match, how they bounced back. After uh, losing in the semi-finals, what made us to focus into into the the losers final so these whole things are really important so closer it's a i mean you know focusing into the details so these whole things are going to change a lot the same way we are expecting the same thing this olympics is not going to be a smooth one you can't uh, think like okay we are going to win match from the first match till the last match there will be up and down there will be some bad moments but uh, that's where all these things will going to help us the preparation is going to help us the work we have done in south africa or uh, uh, recently in Australia, when Paddy joined us, the team building activities, uh, that's that's how things will help us to focus into us rather than going out or you know checking for pressure or all these uh, online coaches will come to us. So these all things will help us to focus more into ourselves, focusing on our work and just to try to perform really well. And uh, that, that's the best part of this team now. It's an experience come young blood in the team in a, in a very good combination. You know, uh, gel way or uh, combined way, which helping us to be one of the, the strongest team or the fittest team in, the, in this uh, competition. Interesting, he used the word fittest team at the very last uh, sentence. I mean, you know, Indian team, teams of the past, including, uh, he will know, uh, you know, we used to concede goals in the 58, 59, 68th minute. And, and, and according to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that also happens because physically you're tired and it impacts you mentally. Because unless you are physically completely at your best, mental fitness will also get impacted. How important is it for you, the combination of physical and mental fitness, to be there focused till the 60th minute, last second, till the hooter goes? Thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, the main point is you derive your level of skill from your level of fitness under pressure. And um, you always are judged by your last mistake. And was your last mistake big enough that had a result or an impact in the game? And I suppose when you have four quarters and the rules are the rules where hockey is a dynamic game. It's, it's one of the harder games to play 
and with eight games in a row and you play game on, day off, back to back, day off, back to back, it's not easy. So we really need to put in the work. Um, there's no other way of cutting that up and making it or should be coaching it. Like we just got to really work hard and deserve, you know, to, to stand over our performances from a physical point of view. But um, then you've got to blend everything into it. Who are you playing? Scoreboard pressure, what's happening? Are you on top? Are you behind? What do you have to still do now? Because it's a results-based environment. So the conditioning is a given. You really need to be conditioned. And, and I would beg to say that the, the top four teams at the end of the tournament will probably be the top four for these teams at the tournament. And then whatever happens after that happens. Shri, when I spoke to you in Tokyo and we were the few people there, right? And you went and sat on top of the goalpost and my first question to you was, what were you doing? And you said, I was looking down. This was my house for 20 years. And I said, uh, now what? Where does she go from here? And we didn't know, right? We didn't know. And even in the felicitations which I hosted, we asked these questions. But did you imagine you'll be there and that motivation? You're there in Paris now. Thoughts on that? See, for the team, the dream is to perform really well uh, during the Paris and beyond that, nobody knows uh, because uh, coach already mentioned in, in, in our team meeting, it's like nobody knows what is going to happen next and nobody knows where this, this team is going to be there or some new players will come, some old players will go. So the focus has to be here. You don't need to distract yourself to a thing like what after Paris. It's, it's all about what are you doing now to achieve something in Paris. So staying in the present. Exactly. I mean, uh, at the age of me, I mean, like, you know, having a lot of experience, uh, it's all important for me is like thinking about the next tournament or next match or next training sessions because that makes you uh, the best player on that day, on that particular tournament. So for me, it's more important than not worrying about what is there after Paris. It's all about what I can get from Paris because uh, Every player's dream is to play for Olympics and uh, it's, when it's Olympic comes, it's all about winning and losing. So, uh, my focus is all there till now. Coach, slightly sort of moving away, I mean, we've seen teams get overcharged. Cricket reference, 2003 World Cup in South Africa, your own country, India versus Australia final, first over 15 runs, game done. And we've seen that at Olympic stage with many athletes, our shooters in, in Tokyo, she will remember, 15 shooters, very talented, didn't win. How do you also maintain the rel relaxation, the, the mental frame? These guys are training, intense, hard work. Are there cheat days? Are there relaxation days? What mm. do these fellows do? What is the backstage? Can you tell my viewers? I think you have to have a balance. I mean, what the boys do is not normal. So there has to still be an enjoyment factor to everything that they do and who they do it with because they spend so much time together. You've still got to enjoy each other's company and then prepare for competition. But in that, you can switch off and just go, you know, solo, and that's not going to be helpful either. So the balance is there, and I think obviously, from a mental side of things, working with um, Paddy and, and the different projects that we are busy with, it's also to get that holistic approach to a, to an athlete who's performing in a high-performing uh, competition, but also still enjoying it, but also knowing where he's very comfortable. And maybe some areas where he has anxiety and then how to give that player tools to deal with that or to openly talk about it. And it's it's normal. You know? I mean, how does this happen? I mean, for example, you are, I'm told you are the one who sort of pumps everyone up, makes jokes, cracks jokes. Tell me about that. See, most of the times players go their own zone uh, and, and their own companies. Uh, most of the times uh, going out, sitting together, having a cup of coffee, it's, it's more than enough. Or just uh, going for a walk and talking each other, talking with each other, that's help you a lot. Or uh, before itself, you can say is that okay, we do have a circle of trust after every matches. You know, that makes uh, players to come up and open up themselves. So that is something which is really important for us, just to share your thoughts with each other. Because you know what irritates you, something if you feel something inside you for such a long time, that irritates you, and that's something which break a team. And the best part you only mentioned is, is like we do have uh, the small, small things which helping us to stay together, the, which, which help us to do together. That's one thing is like circle, circle of trust. Even from me, the senior most of this team, from Ali, who is who's made a debut in Australia, everyone talks there. They, they give their feedbacks. If somebody is something, he felt it like, okay, this is not wrong with this team, or this is I mean, what we are doing, he mentioned it. So that makes this team more beautiful and more open up and when, when it comes to back-to-back -back matches 
you know, we get frustrated, we get irritated. Some players played extremely well, some players post yeah. down. Some some couldn't take the pressure, some is like going to easily manage it. So that's the times these open talks always help us, these all team bonding activities help us and moreover like the knowledge about the game help us and after that when it comes to coach, we analyze the game, we open up with everyone says that okay this is what we need to do. So I think it's it's more about how a team function as on the field and off the field and in a casual way. So the experience with the players are uh, really wide now and they, they are helping each other to to get, get into their best motion. Last question to both of you, not because he's here. You know, the players and the coach, the captain and the coach, different culture, by the way, is essential for a successful team. One and a half years now. Thoughts on Craig and, and, and his impact? See, Craig, as a coach, uh, he got all the flavors. See, being a player, getting into coaching, uh, assisted a lot of teams, and uh, I mean, you know, working with Ireland and making them qualify for the Olympic Games, being part of the Belgian team. Uh, winning World Cup, uh, winning uh, European Championship, winning Belgium, I mean, you know, the, the Olympic Games. Uh, so these are the collective experience from a coach, how the mentality change. And from the player to, you know, uh, to be a coach, you need to change your mentality. Then taking all this experience of a player to a coach to understand them and understand here, you know, you need to understand both the ways as a player, what you think and as a coach, what I need to change. And experience of handling pressure in the crucial moments. Quarterfinals, crucial. Semi-finals, crucial. Finals, crucial. Sometimes there will be up and downs, how you are managing. And being a coach, he been through the, I mean, you know, the ways. He, he knows how to handle that. So, that thing is helping us a lot. Mm. You know, that's something which is important for us. Because if somebody is never been there, yeah, won't be he, he cannot explain that to you. He cannot tell you that, okay, you should do it like this. Because he never be there. Correct. This guy, he knows and that's the best part of him and you know that he, he knows where these guys go good cheat and where he, they are going to be good so that is the best part because that's an important factor of a player who become a international person last question to you to finish ireland <laughs> belgium all of these countries player is india the most difficult assignment of your life no it's not the most difficult it's the most diverse it's 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 stooped in the culture and the diversity of everything. It's like a collective melting pot of, 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 of talent and of different languages and influences and how big is the country and you know how um, supportive it is of its, of its sport in general. It's fanatical. So it's, it's beautiful it, as, a, as a mix. I'm not saying it's easy. And um, what we're trying to do is break it down and try and use its strength of its DNA of what is good about Indian hockey, what is good about their talent. And the number one thing for me is to make them fly high and be as confident in their own ability, their own identity of what they can bring and what, you know, how they can inspire the next generation. And also those that watch that really get behind them through the thick and the thin. Because it's going to be a tournament and a tournament's a roller coaster. You, you know, you, you could be have the greatest start and then really have to finish well to, to make the quarters or the opposite, have a poor start and then finish yeah, all the way. So who knows how it's going to go. The, the fact is that we need to be prepared for everything. And from an Indian point of view, like just get behind your team. It's so easy to get critical. It's so easy to point fingers and but like I think I've been, you said a year and a half, I've only been here a year, you know. So if you think about an Olympic terms, a year. It's not a long time, we had three months to qualify. But we ticked that box, we ticked the next box, we're still here, we're still improving, we're still now getting excited about going to the pro league. Get behind the team, let's not, you know, blow this this um, expectation up too high. That's just for me. Get behind the players, support them. And uh, yeah, we have to be good in Paris, but we've still got some work to do now. I'll finish off saying why I said one and a half, because, you know, it's sort of, Having spoken to Craig and seeing the Indian hockey team and supporting it, he's almost become, it's Craig. He's been there. Longer, far longer than one can actually imagine. One year. More than that. Because it's part of our subconscious DNA now. It's in our subconscious mind. Muscle memory says Craig is part of the Indian team. One thing I will say when I finish, and I've said this on multiple shows. Listen, 1.4 billion people, yes. 16 will be out there with their tricolor and the support staff 
trying to do a job for India. Just get behind them. In good and bad, not every day will go well. Can't be. In sport, you will lose more than you will win. That's a fact. Having said that, that last iota of fuel will be left on that pitch. But by PR Shrijesh, by Craig and by the rest of the team. That's all we want. Results will take care of themselves. On behalf of Rev Sports, we'll be there. With our full team of six or seven, no Indian media house will send that many. To be one mission. Be with them, back them, support them and make a difference. Results? After that, if they win, I will again push for the next interview. But till then, keep supporting. Thank you very much.